Cilia. A decade or so has passed. Actually, all of you are summoned by Luna to Lunaria. Cilia, she asked a specific request of you to bring a statue made of ice that is still frozen even after all these years. And you gather in a beautiful outdoor temple next to the central lake of Lunaria, dedicated to the Order of the Tides. You gather around with your friends and your family. Tara is there. So is Gandry and Skye and their child, only three or four years old, who enjoys playing with Vidarnot, as well as Lily. Riley is there, grown bigger and broader, now wielding Von Malik. He has Lysithia strapped across one shoulder as well. Iska arrives. Luck there as well. And Luna gathers you together to begin the casting of the spell that she has accessed now. Asking you to remember your friend. Remember the insane things he did. And of all things, there, standing in this beautiful, elegant outdoor temple, still with some swampy water around its base, is the ugliest metal tree you've ever seen. And as the spell comes to closure, anchored in the roots of a awful, tacky, bronze tree, Cilia, you watch as that statue grows in size to the size of a person. You see inside this ice shell the glitter begin to swirl as though it were in a snow globe. <laughs> a globe of winter wonders, in fact. And it's almost within a blink that the glitter disappears. The ice shatters. And while most times when something like this happens, the person would emerge completely dry, soaking wet from head to toe, like a bedraggled rat, steps out. Vidar. Still in a panic in combat and just completely unaware of the situation until a second passes. As the last thing he saw was a crackling beam of energy, and his hand just goes up and energy radiates just. Did I miss something? An entire decade of some things. (laughs) 
and uh, Celia will <laughs> pull Ryan Talia. <laughs> And she says, Sir Antalia, she says, you belong to him. One of the first times you've ever, you hear Ryan Tiger, go, thank you, darling. <laughs> Just like you, first thing you hand me, <laughs> sword get in here. And I just... <laughs> Tackle to the ground, Celia, and just start laugh crying. <laughs> Looking back at everyone, I see. So, I guess, uh, I guess death finally caught up to me for a while then. But. Just for clarity's sake, as the person who saved you more often than not, I wrote a really, really good tragic song about your passing. So I'm not gonna rewrite that, okay? That's, it's, it's very solid. Can I hear it at least before I make a choice? No. No. You can hear oh. it, you don't get a choice. Okay. I mean. Well, I guess we won. I guess, uh... Well, <laughs> if we want to be technical about it, we won and you died. So for a while, we all won. Yeah, but look at that. The tree's here too, so you still... Yeah, lost. take that with you when you leave. Getting rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> also, you and Celia are uncle and aunt now, so be less irresponsible. I don't know if I could do that. Do it for him. What's up, little guy? Who's this? You uh, see as this uh, dark-skinned uh, shadow Janasi runs up to you. Uh, I'm Vidar. No, you can't be Vidar and Vidar. But, <laughs> but she, she like mental like to you, just like hug him and shut up. But no, I'm Vidar. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lean in to whoever's around us in the group and just go like, okay, so when Luna, when you asked us to come babysit Vidar, did you mean that? or she just <laughs> says, she just says yes. I'm not taking him with me. He stays with her. Well, Vidar, strange to say. Yes, Vidar, you need to be responsible. Isn't that important, Vidar? Oh, I'll make sure he's okay. Yes, it's very important to be responsible and always listen to your mother. Oh, I know that. Everyone knows that. Did you not listen to mom? (laughs) Are you crazy? Mom, is he stupid? Yes, he is. Okay. Except when you leave Uncle Vidar. I will murder you again and resurrect you again. I am okay with that, actually. <laughs> death was like an... Uh, was that death? Huh. Quiet. Lycrin. I can murder you again. Take the bottle. Get married. Go on a honeymoon. You know, some things don't change. Bottle of champagne. I don't know. (laughs) Is that what elves drink? Ah, close enough. Not dwarven. No. Anyway. Wine. Elven wine. Wine. Sure, wine. Wait, hold on. Wait, we're getting married? What? You'll you'll do what... She just points at Luck to make it up with him. Knowing that she's a cleric is just like, nope, not my problem. (laughs) So, well, I think the uh, the birth calls for a bit of a ceremony. Shakes the bottle. 
if you're down for it, Celia, I definitely am. How romantic. <laughs> Prestigitation, two glasses. Celia says, uh, do you think I waited a decade for nothing? What's a decade to an elf? <laughs> a decade. <laughs> What's a decade to us? <laughs> Listen. <sighs> yes. It's a long weekend. <laughs> it's a long time. I just had a bit of a bit. You know what I've done <laughs> in a decade. <laughs> uh, I'm around the waist and I'm going to bring her in closer and I just say, I want to hear every second of it. And just... 